Hi, Marcy White at Copley Acupuncture, and I just wanted to make a very quick video today because I've now seen my third person just this week alone come in with poison ivy. And so everybody's getting outside more, gardening, hiking, and that stuff is hiding everywhere. So um, when someone comes into the office for their appointment and I happen to see poison ivy, I usually pull out my secret weapon, which is called a plum blossom needle. And it sounds very pretty. It's also occasionally called, or sometimes called the seven star needle. And so it looks like a little hammer. You can see that there are some needles on the head of this hammer, and then there's a single needle on the other side. So this has a lot of uses, but in Chinese medicine, uh, one thing that this can do is it can help with releasing what we call stagnation and also releasing heat. So a condition like poison ivy in Asian medicine theory is called a damp heat condition. Dampness causes things to have pus, swelling, uh, mucus, things like that. And then the heat would be the itching and, and the redness. So with damp heat in, in our medicine, we can use herbal medicine to help with that. And we can also use something like the plum blossom needle. And so it's very simple. If you have, let's say I have some poison ivy on my hand here, you never want to touch the actual poison ivy or lesion. What you do is you want to go around it and you tap in a very patterned way around the poison ivy. And you do this until it gets nice and red. So it may take a few minutes to see that happening. Some people use a very light pressure until you just get a little redness. And then another technique is you can do it a little harder um, to the patient's comfort, obviously, or to your own comfort if you're doing it to yourself. But you can do it until you're starting to see a little bit of blood rise to the surface there. And that is a form of bloodletting. And bloodletting, helps to release inflammation and heat out of the surface of the skin. So it does a great job with relieving itch and also helping this to heal faster. I've used it before on psoriasis and eczema and even on shingles. So those are all conditions that have components of heat on the surface of the skin. So really simple technique. If you happen to be here for your appointment with poison ivy, we can do it in the office. And I also then give people one to take home and you can use it on yourself uh, until it's starting to feel better. But this is, again, you know, one of the dangers of summer. So be careful out there. And if you do wind up with some poison ivy and it's feeling like it isn't being managed well with your conventional treatments and therapies, just consider using this and give me a call and I can help you with that. Thank you so much. So continuation of the uh, discussion with plum blossom needling and poison ivy, we just had someone come in today with poison oak from a lovely trip to California that didn't end on the best note, but was a good trip. So this is a, a good example just to show you how we go around um, the area. You always want to wipe with alcohol, which I just did. And then we're going to do some light tapping. And so um, you just have to tell me if it's feeling uncomfortable. Okay. It feels a little prickly and a little bit sharp, which is fine, but I can completely control the, the pressure. So you just start to tap around. You can kind of pick a quadrant to start with and just go in that area until it starts to get nice and red. Um, you can do it harder until you start to see some um, blood come up to the surface if you want to do that, but that's not necessary. How's that pressure? Good. Feel? Yeah. So as you start to do this, um, consistently enough in one spot, you'll see that there's some redness showing up um, around the area. And so basically what you want to do is go around this entire area um, until you get the redness pretty equal in all the spots. And then there are some, unfortunately, more po poison oak. Um, so we would go around this whole area uh, as well. And you just do that until um, to your comfort, whatever you want to do, you can do redness or you can actually get a few drops of blood. To the surface. So this is what it looks like post plum blossom. You can see that you get a nice big red ring around it. This does disappear, but that's a really good sign that we're releasing a lot of the heat and the inflammation out of the area. So there's a little bit of some blood coming out. Um, this is really normal. And you'll see every, every spot that we did has a little bit of a, a red ring around it. And that's what you're looking for. So as soon as that red ring shows up from your plum blossom needling, you can stop.